Okay, uh, I'm going to tie a stone flopper. It's a hybrid fly that represents either a grasshopper or a stone fly. Um, we're going to tie the tan version. In the vise we have an Allen S402 hook. It's a streamer hook. You can see it's heavy wire and that's on purpose because this fly has so much foam if you don't use a heavier hook it won't land right side up every time. Anyway I'm going to dress my my hook with some UTC 140 in wood duck color. And I'm just going to take the uh, natural colored round rubber um, this is the medium size and I'm going to tie in two tails so you want to make sure that you tie in tie these in on this on the side of the the hook shank as you can see I've got it tied in on the far side of the hook and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this piece of, of material I'm going to fold it back so now I've got two pieces of rubber leg material tied on either side of the hook. Alright, um, I like the centipede look on these so I'm going to take these tails and I leave them long on purpose so I can do this but I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to come in with my marker and I'm just going to roll those pieces of round rubber on the sharpie which will mark both the top and the bottom And that's plenty long. So I'm just going to cut this about half the length of the body. Just about like that. Now there are times after I mark these with a marker that they take on a slight curve. But after a little while they'll straighten back out. Next step is just to take some either Spanflex or the Legs Alive material from Fly Tires Dungeon. And this is going to be the ribbing for the body. Um, the body is done with dubbing to add that buggy factor to a foam fly. There are a lot of times where fish will come up and if your fly has too much foam on the underside, it just doesn't break up the fly very much. Uh, it, it doesn't look as natural. So I like to put some buggy material and, and I choose dubbing on this. I've really been having a lot of success using the Arizona synthetic dubbing on this fly. Alright, the color that I've chosen for this fly is Golden Stone, or Gold Stone. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a really good color, gives off a lot of light. And I'm just going to dub it on the body. I like to dub it fairly thick because I'm going to brush it out a little bit. We're going to take that uh, body wrap or legs alive, whichever one it is, from Fly Tires Dungeon and just rib the body. And this you could use any, any material that you want. This isn't a critical material to the fly. I just use it because I have a whole bunch of it. At this point, I'm just going to take a a dubbing teaser tool and I'm going to pick out the body or brush it out a bit. And then brush it down because the, the foam will lay right over the top of it. Now I've taken some Rainey's Evisote foam in uh, eighth inch and <clears throat> I've cut it roughly a little bit wider than the body but as you can see, I've trimmed it and, and burned it a little bit. And when you burn this foam, it shrinks it down a tiny bit, but it, it takes off some of those unnatural edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this over the top of that body and uh, tie it in. And it's going to go, uh, it's going to extend a little bit further than the bend of the hook, kind of to almost the midpoint of these rubber legs, just like that. You really want to make sure that you get several wraps of, of uh, really tight thread on this.
All right, now, as you cast this fly, if you were to leave it like this, this is gonna flop all around in the wind. So you wanna secure it to the body. I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue. And I'm just going to lay that down. Okay, the next step is just to tie in uh, some deer hair. Just a little bit. Really, I don't, I don't know if this deer hair um, helps the fly float very much. It's just really kind of the, the silhouette of having a wing. And, you know, as you fish it, as you catch some fish, it can kind of look unruly. It'll go off to a side, and that's actually desired to make it fish well. I want those tips right to the end of the foam. So one one t one trick to tying in clump of deer hair like this is um, if I were to make a really tight wrap right off the bat, it would cause those ends to flare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make just a, a few loose wraps like this, and then I'm going to come up here, and this is where I'm going to really pinch it down. Then I'm going to come back up here and kind of give it some some more moderate wraps. So those are really tied in. But it's not going to cause this back wing to flare out, you know, and, and make it look unnatural. I'll just trim those off. Now for the head. Now, uh, this is a foam bullet head. There are a couple different ways you can do this. Some guys will take a piece of foam and poke a hole in it and stick the eye through the foam fold it over, uh, but what happens is you, you have a really square looking head if you do that. And also the head will rotate. So what I like to do is I like to attach a piece of foam on top of the hook and a piece of foam on bottom of the hook to allow for a more durable head and you know a more natural looking head. So what I'll do is I've cut a piece of foam that's wider than the gap of the hook. The reason I do that is because when I pull it over itself, the edges of the foam have to fold over the fly. So if, it, if it's not wide enough you'll see all this nasty thread and deer hair through the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of foam and I'm going to butt it up against those pieces of deer hair and you notice that my thread is right behind the eye. So I'm going to butt it up just like this, hold it in place and make some wraps and as I wrap I'm gradually getting tighter and tighter go back here and secure the the ends and this is where a rotary vise really comes in handy because I'm just going to ro rotate it upside down and do the same thing on the bottom okay for the bottom piece I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, I've taken the rotary vise turned it upside down and I'm just going to lay that right in place tie this down by the way this this is a little bit different foam. I, I found that the 8th inch Eviso is a little bit thick to do this. So I've moved toward a craft foam. This craft foam is, I found it's a little bit thicker than 2 mil, but the majority of the, the foam that I use for this fly is 2 mil craft foam. Okay, so there we've got the eye, enough to, to thread up pretty good. Alright, so I've got this tied in. Now I'm just going to advance my thread back to where I tied in that wing and uh, I'm going to finish the bullet head. Now to add extra durability to this I'm just going to add a tiny bit of super glue on top, tiny bit on the bottom. Now you'll see when I pull this over and, and wrap the thread around it, it will naturally wrap the foam around the head. So there we go. We've got our head in place. Now we've just got to trim off the foam and finish it up. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to kind of stretch the foam a little bit and trim it. So there we go. Now as you see on the bottom of this fly, the dubbing is kind of, you know, all wadded up. 
I'll take and, and brush it out to the sides a little bit. So that's the bottom profile of the fly. Next we're just going to attach some legs with the same uh, rubber leg material that we used to do the tails with. And as many of you have commented, we got to put the top hat on this fly. Just going to take a Rainey's 332 inch parachute post and uh, cut it at an angle first. And take that and just place it right on the thread wraps and tie that down. So it's minimal thread wraps and we'll cut it off just big enough to see. Alright, we're almost done. Um, to whip finish this fly, we're actually just going to take some super glue and stick it right up by the indicator. Trim off my thread, and now we just need to bar the legs, just the same way we did the tail. Okay, so when we trim these legs, they're not going to be quite as long as like a Chernobyl ant. They're just going to be, you know, a little bit shorter. So I trim one side, and then a good way to get uniformity on both sides, you trim one side, and then I'll push both these legs up together like this and use one leg to, to find the point where I'm going to trim off the other legs. Alright, that's the stone flopper. Um, caught a lot of different species of fish on it. It's a super durable fly. Um, anyway, tie it in a cinnamon color and brown and olive. Uh, this is probably my favorite one though.